coming off an inspiring 2020-21 campaign, Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, and the New York Knicks went into the following season with much larger expectations. It would be hard to top last season where it seemed everything went right for the New York Knicks. Randle winning most improved player, Tom Thibodeau taking home coach of the year, and veterans such as Reggie Bullock, Nerlens Noel, and even Alec Burks having some of the best years of their career. But over the offseason, the Knicks did bring in new firepower. They brought in New York legend in Kemba Walker, and they brought in sharpshooter Evan Fournier, both from the Boston Celtics, and both making uh, some significant money, more, specific, more specifically Fournier. Kemba, they got on a pretty cheap deal. And uh, on opening night, they played the former team of Fournier and Kemba. And in a thriller, they took down those Boston Celtics in double overtime. They started the season 5-1. and one. It seemed great. Fast forward to present day, and they have finished the season 11th in the Eastern Conference and uh, with the 11th worst record in the National Basketball Association not making the playoffs. So what went wrong for the Knicks? And what players disappointed this season? Today, we're going to dive into that. Grading the New York Knicks season and specific players' seasons. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first player we got to talk about is Julius Randle. Randle was one of the least efficient players in the league who was taking uh, more than 10 shots a game and averaged the most isolations a game out of any player in the league, which is not really his fault. It's more Tom Thibodeau's fault, who also did not have a great year as a coach, but he also shot the lowest percentage on isolations in the league of players who meet the requirement for that. So that does tell you a lot about the type of season he had. He turned the ball over more, and part of it was his fault. He had a bad relationship with the fans as well this year, but he also just had the ball in his hands way too much. And that's got to be attributed to uh, more Tom Thibodeau as a coach than a fault of Randall's own. Overall, though, Julius Randall this season definitely took a major step down from his career most improved player year last year. And um, it's really now a question after he's gotten that extension if he's even a piece moving forward for the Knicks or if they should commit to Obi Toppin. Now next on this list is RJ Barrett and Barrett made a significant jump as a scorer this year. His percentages and efficiency still not great. He had a really good year too uh, with the Knicks and um, made a jump to uh, a player who contributed to winning in this year. Definitely saw improvements taking assignments as a one-on-one -on -one defender guarding uh, the team's best wing player in a lot of games with the departure of Reggie Bullock. He averaged 20 points a game, but his percentages were down, as especially in the time Randall was out. And overall, throughout the season, he had a much bigger role in the offense, had the ball in his hands a lot more. But with that, we saw some flashes of, you know, playmaking, some new moves being added to the bag. He hit a great game winner. And we also saw from him, you know, um, a 46-point performance versus the best defense in the NBA in the Miami Heat. So he showed a lot of really positive things, but his free throws, his three-point shooting, and just his all-around efficiency, you'd like to see, you definitely like and need to see um, him make a jump next year and a big question for the Knicks this offseason is do you pay him how much is he worth a max and what type of money is he going to command this offseason next up is another new addition to the New York Knicks and that was Evan Fournier now Fournier has a reputation as a microwave scorer and a three-point shooter Signed from Boston after playing there half a year, spent a lot of his career with the Orlando Magic, helped them uh, to a few playoff appearances as an eight seed, but they didn't really make any noise. But Fournier started the year in the first game of the season, was absolutely red hot versus his former team, the Celtics, and helped the Knicks to a great double overtime win that we discussed earlier, and then had a bit of a rough patch throughout the year, 
But I would say overall, he lived up to his contract. He broke the New York Knicks season record for most threes in a game. And, um, you know, Evan Fournier, he did pretty much what he was supposed to. He hit a good rate of threes, shooting over 40%. It took a lot each game. He had games where he heated up, but he also had games where he disappeared. He's not a great defender, but he was a microwave scorer who got hot from three in a lot of games and hit a good amount of shots. So I would give his season around a B minus. And uh, for RJ earlier, I would say RJ would get a B plus. And as for Julius Randle, I would give him a D as for the first three players discussed in this video. Now, the fourth player, Kemba Walker, obviously a New York legend. And I don't even know if he can get a grade because he was out of the lineup for a lot of the season due to injuries or benched or shut down. He had a few great games when he came back after being benched. That was a, one of the highlights of the Knicks season. But overall, he probably will not return. And um, he had a few fun moments with the Knicks. But overall, it just seems like he's best as a bench player on a contender that can give you points in some games as like a microwave six man type of guy. Now the fifth player, Mitchell Robinson. Now over this off season, Mitchell Robinson, we saw on Instagram, on social media and all that, he was in the weight room. He gained a ton of weight over the off season and to start the year, he was huge. He, it kind of looked like he gained too much weight he was very big, and throughout the season, he had to get more in shape as he might have gained too much weight too fast, but we like to see from him, he played a good amount of games this season. I believe only missed 10 games this year. He definitely outplayed his uh, teammate, Neurons Noel, by far. Now, Mitch overall, another question for the Knicks this offseason is, do you pay Mitchell Robinson? But I would say he did what was asked of him. He made a jump as a rebounder and continues to get smarter on the defensive end, less fouling, less fouling out of games. He's a better rebounder, and again, he shot great from the field, but if he could just get his free throws up, and if the Knicks can get a real point guard, he can be a double-double machine. His stats were a bit underwhelming, but overall, if you really watch the games and see you know, his paint presence and the amount of offensive rebounds he gets his team, it's clear Mitchell Robinson definitely impacts the Knicks in the right way. And I would say he, he had a B, around a B of a season. Really going to be interesting to see if the Knicks pay him. And that is the starting five for the Knicks. Now, everybody else on the team going to have to be a little quicker as we spent eight minutes of this video discussing just the first five players. So starting with Derrick Rose, who's probably a top, definitely when he's healthy, a top three player on the Knicks. I don't really know if he can get a grade because he only played like 20 games, but he was really good and his impact was clearly shown when he was off the floor. The team is just worse without him, but I don't think it's fair to give D-Rose a grade. Next up is Nerlens Noel. I got to give him like a D because... He got that contract, and he was not available at all. And availability is av ability. You could say that for Derrick Rose, too, but when we see Derrick Rose on the floor, it's so clear that he impacts the team. I think New Orleans Noel does as well, but it just made me mad because I didn't really want him to be re-signed in the first place. He had a good year last year, but with Mitch being a free agent the next year, I'd much rather pay Mitch. So, um, he didn't really have a good season either. Emmanuel quickly, he had a really rough patch for part of the season, but he ended the year really, really strong and showed his playmaking ability. He showcased it a lot, and at times he really does look like a real point guard, and you think maybe he can be the next point guard of the future. Maybe, just maybe, he has a chance to be that. I would give him a B or a B-plus on this season. Would have liked to see a bit more consistency, but overall, it's clear he showed improvement in his game when he uh, got out of his cold streak and the all the potentials there to be a really good guard. 
and a long-term piece on this team. Obi Toppin, I'm going to give a B plus. When he played, he was really good. I just would have liked to see him more. And Towards the end of the year, he was amazing when Julius Randle was out and he was playing lots of minutes. But overall, you just want to see more of him. But he's a great finisher, and towards the end of the year, he really showed a jump with his three-point shooting. We'll see how real that is, but as a three-point shooter and a passer, and definitely a scorer, he made a clear improvement, and as a defender, he all around definitely became a better, more confident player this season, and you like to see that. Quentin Grimes, B+, A-, minus, really good for uh, the 25th pick, I believe. Just want to see him stay healthy. Alec Burks, C+. Plus. Part of it is not his fault due to the fact he was playing point guard and he really shouldn't be. He's a decent wing player. He just shouldn't be playing point guard and a starting point guard for an NBA team. And that partly is Tom Thibodeau's fault and not his. So I'll give him a B minus actually. Give him some of the Bennett benefit of the doubt a lot of games early in the season where I seriously thought we were a playoff team he saved us and when I had actual expectations for the team Jericho Sims a minus he was really good for a 58th pick and looks like you know like maybe a solid long-term piece you know maybe he could be on the team for a while gets a second contract really good defender and rebounder want to see his free throw shooting get better and maybe a little more of an inside game not asking for anything too crazy but Really like what I saw from him. Taj Gibson, got to give him a B plus. Great leader. Was very solid when he plays. He's just old, and he can't play for that long. I hope he returns next year as maybe an assistant or a coach, or maybe just in like a Udonis Haslam role on the roster, but not playing that much. And his three-point shots was, they were a fun part of the Knicks season. Deuce McBride, I'd give a B minus. Was great in the G League. Did not seem ready though, really on offense, but want to see him in summer league and want to see him get the opportunity next year to fight for a rotation spot. Cam Reddish, same. He showed some flashes. He really should have played more. I'd give him a B minus. I mean, he looked good on defense, very good on defense under Tom Thibodeau. Had some offensive flashes, but overall didn't shoot very well um, from the field. And, uh, yeah, that is my list. Those are my next season grades. I'm really excited uh, for the team this offseason. I know they didn't have a good year, but they have an intriguing young core to me. And even while the team's results weren't that good, they have a lot of different directions and possible options. So I'm going to be very interested to see what the Knicks do this offseason. And I thank y'all for watching. Peace.